Hi, Catherine Rhodes here, and today we're going to speak about performance management and appraisal. One of the most difficult things that most managers and supervisors do. The learning objectives for this chapter are to explain the purpose of performance appraisal, answer the question, who should do the appraising, discuss the pros and cons of at least eight different performance appraisal methods, and explain how to conduct an appraisal feedback interview. Well, performance appraisal is just evaluating an employee's current and or past performance based upon performance standards. But you have to have performance standards before you can assess them. But employees need to receive feedback to help eliminate performance deficiencies or in order to get better at what they're doing. Effective goal setting, and I've used this for a long time, should be smart, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So help employees set motivational goals and encourage participation. Why even bother appraising performance? I've read several different articles that talk about what you should do or shouldn't do, and it makes it very difficult. But it helps a supervisor make promotion and salary raise decision. It helps to develop a plan for correcting any deficiencies. It also facilitates career planning. And the supervisor, the immediate supervisor, is the best person to observe and to evaluate an employee's performance. Occasionally, companies have peer appraisals where peers, people on the same level as they are, actually give feedback. And it can help by opening up communication, satisfaction level can increase, and you can also have better teamwork. You can also have a rating committee, which is composed of immediate supervisor or a group of supervisors. And sometimes that helps to counsel out problems such as bias, which individual raters have. It can also help to look at the whole person as opposed to just what one person knows about them. You can also ask people to self-rate and sometimes what happens is that employees usually rate themselves higher. So 40% of employees, according to the book, place themselves in the top 10%. You can also ask subordinates or employees to give evaluations on their supervisor's performance. And that can help managers diagnose management styles or issues or people problems and take corrective action. And here at Rhone State Community College and at other places that I've worked, um, they employees of the person and in fact in, um, people that report to the people who report to me, the entire group, get an opportunity to assess my performance and give feedback on that. Sometimes you receive 360 degree feedback and that's feedback that is collected from supervisors, subordinates, people that report to you, peers, and then even internal and external candidates and customers. And that helps because it gives a better picture and a round picture of how you interact with others. There are a lot of different appraisal methods, graphic rating scale, such as a five or a four or three, or uh, meets, or exceeds or does not meet. You can do ranking. You can do paired comparison. Force distribution, that old bell curve, critical incident method where you put down the good things that somebody's done and then the not so good things. There's the bar method and then there's management by objectives. The graphic rating scale just lists a number of traits, attendance, um, quality of work, and you just pick it. Pick what number you think is best. You can rank employees from the best to the worst on particular traits and then um, give them the applicable store, score. rather. You can do paired comparison where you compare two individuals. I don't like that method. I think that's difficult. Force distribution method where uh, predetermined percentages get 
excellent and so many get good and somebody gets poor at the end. That's kind of like determining in this class how many people are going to get A's and how many are going to get F's. I don't do that. Everybody needs to shine. And if you believe that you've hired the best people, then you would anticipate that everybody is going to be a good performer. Sometimes uh, companies have forced distribution methods where you have a top 10, middle 70, and a bottom 10. In the bottom 10, you do a performance improvement action plan. You can keep records, um, and this is the way I like to do it, of what good things somebody's done or when there's been difficulties and you have to give uh, immediate feedback to put things back on the right track. You can have behaviorally anchored rating scales where you have narrative critical incidents and quantitative ratings, such as attendance, uh, never misses, misses occasionally, you know, uh, one to three times per year, and then rating it by that. Or you can have management by objectives, which requires the manager and the employee to sit down and decide upon um, mutual measurable goals and then have meetings based upon that and give feedback um, and you don't just do that at the beginning of the year and the end of the year and we do that here based upon the strategic plan we have the strategic planning online so that we can actually go on and put down what we've done and how we think we're going to accomplish it and then at, at a minimum twice a year we have to go in and give updates. So that helps to provide feedback and that way we're all working on the same goals and the same strategic plan. Performance management is the identification, measuring, and development of performance of individuals or teams. And you have to give feedback on an ongoing basis, coaching and support, and you have to reward and recognize and compensate people. Occasionally, we all get into issues where we have common appraisal problems, and the book goes into more detail about this, where the standards are not clear, where because you like somebody, you tend to rate them very high. Central tendency where you tend to rate everybody kind of as one, two, three, you know, all in the middle. Leniency where everybody is so good, everybody's excellent, or you're biased because maybe you don't care for someone. So you have to look at that and you have to think about that. You want to make sure that you have the information necessary and have backup documentation. And that's where HR really gets into it, to document, to have a good job description, to discuss issues as they come up and not pile it on all at the end. And to make sure that the appraisal is representative of what they uh, what the person's actually done during the year. The most important thing is not the paperwork, but the actual dialogue that happens between the supervisor and the employee to sit down and discuss it. You need to make sure that the employee knows and enough advance notice so that they're just not walking in cold. You also want to make sure that they have a copy of the instrument that you are using so that they can review it and you want to be able to sit down and talk about it in a private area without interruptions. You want to talk about work, you want to talk about getting agreement, and you want to know that sometimes people get a little defensive when you say, when you give constructive feedback to them. But you need to coach, educate, instruct, and train subordinates, and you also need to mentor, advise, and counsel, and guide employees because the one thing that you don't want to do is have to rehire that person for a person to fill that position. So make sure that when you get ready to do the appraisal that you yourself know what's going on. Make sure that the person understands. Give that person an opportunity to discuss what's going on and listen with an open mind and encourage the person to talk. Typically I always uh, give the paperwork to the person and let them review it and tell them don't sign it right now. Think about it and bring it back to me tomorrow. Yep, oh, there go the lights. Let's turn them back on. One of the other reasons that you want to do appraisals 
is because you want to have an opportunity to talk about their career goals. And there are some individuals who are happy where they are and others who would like to move ahead. So that gives you an opportunity to talk about where is it that you see yourself in five years? How can I help you get there? What is it that you particularly uh, want to do? And then you can also talk to them about educational needs that they may have or assignments, temporary assignments that you can give. You can also assign a mentor, somebody who can um, mentor that person, give advice and counsel to that person so that they can move up. But you also want to make sure that they understand if they want to be the president, that there's only one president and that uh, that can be very difficult. So they may have to move in order to attain their career goals. You can um, do all sorts of things. It's career planning. Um, but we also want to be sensitive to women as well as minorities because there are sometimes difficulties in those individuals moving up. When we look at the individuals who hold the CEO or COO positions, the, ma the majority of them are still white males over 50 years old. You want to have the opportunity to manage promotions and transfers. You don't want to just look at seniority, but you want to look at competence. You want to make sure that you put the right person in the right job, otherwise it gets difficult. And then there are individuals who start to look at retirement. So once people determine that they want to retire, then you need to look at how are we going to fill that position? Is this person interested in maybe uh, working a part-time or a flexible schedule so that you can phase it in? And at the college, we have what's called post-retirement where our faculty members can work part-time as they then transition into retirement. So. We want to look at all those things, but we also want to retain those individuals who are talented that helps us to move our organization forward. And there are ways that you can do that through talent management systems or um, uh, succession planning tools. You can do that online, you can do it with pen and paper, but it still means that you talk to the individual and that you get a sense of where they want to go and how you can help them achieve that. So again, that is Chapter 6, Performance Management and Appraisal. You'll have an opportunity to work on a case study, and I'll assign that to you, uh, where there's a performance issue. And those are very difficult to work with, but hopefully this case study will give you some insight in that. Um, I think it's interesting to work on these sort of things because it gives you a realistic preview of what you may face as either an HR manager or just as a manager in general. So with that, that's chapter six. Check it off in the books. Don't forget to do your environmental scan. Uh, do your quiz for chapter six. And I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.